reading books, it's fun. I often read them with my mum. I like reading to explore. There's no better way, I'm sure. I love reading. There's so many books to choose. Get on board, you just can't lose. Books expand your mind, it's true. Reading books is good for you. I love reading. Everybody. Welcome to Storytime with Ethan and Chaco. I'm Ethan from Ethan and Chaco's Book Club, ECBC for short. I was treated at Chalk for three and a half years when I had cancer, and I started ECBC when I noticed that most kids didn't have books and weren't reading. I'm excited for the show and to read aloud to you all of my favorite books. The book I'm reading today is called The Widow's Room, written and illustrated by Chris Van Allsburg. This is one of my all-time favorite books to read around Halloween. Though it's not specific to Halloween and can be read all year long. It's also not just for little kids. The story is great for older kids and even adults. The Widow's Bro Broom by Chris Van Allsburg. Witches' brooms don't last forever. They grow old, and even the best of them, one day, lose the power of flight. Fortunately, this does not happen in an instant. A witch can feel the strength slowly leaving her broom. The sudden bursts of energy that once carried her quickly into the sky become weak. Longer and longer running starts are needed for takeoff. Speedy brooms that, in their youth, outrage hawks are passed by slow flying geese. When these things happen, a witch knows it's time to put her old room aside and have a new one made. On a very rare occasion, however, a room can lose its power without warning and fall with its passenger to the earth below, which is just what happened one cold autumn night many years ago. You can see a witch falling with her broom. I don't know how her cape fell off, but. Out of a moonlit sky, a dark cloaked figure came spinning to the ground. The witch, along with her tired broom, landed beside a small white farmhouse, the home of a lonely widow named Mina Shaw. At daybreak, Widow Shaw discovered the witch lying in her vegetable garden. She was bruised and bloody and couldn't stand up on her own. In spite of her fear and because she was a kind woman, Mina Shaw helped the witch inside and put her to bed. The witch asked Mina Shaw to draw the curtains, then wrapped herself tightly in her black cape and fell soundly asleep. She lay there, perfectly still, all day and all evening. When she finally awoke at midnight, her wounds had completely healed. She rose from the bed and moved silently through the widow's house. Mina Shaw was asleep in a chair by the fireplace where embers of dying fire glowed on the hearth. The witch knelt and took one of the red hot coals in her hand. Outside, she made a fire of leaves and twigs and dropped a strand of hair into the flame. The fire hissed and crackled, burning with a brilliant blue light. Before long, the witch could see a dark form flying overhead. It was another witch who circled slowly and landed beside the fire. The two women spoke briefly, the first witch get gesturing toward the garden where her old room rested. Then they sat side by side on the second witch's broom and flew off over the treetops. When Mina Shaw woke up, she wasn't surprised to find that her guests had gone. Witches, she knew, had unusual powers. It didn't surprise her either when she saw that the old room had been left behind. The widow get the widow guessed it had lost its magic. It was an ordinary broom now, just like the one she kept in her kitchen. She began using it around the house and found that it was no better or worse than the brooms she had used before. One morning, Mina Shaw was still in bed when she heard a noise coming from the kitchen. She peeked in and saw something that had made her heart jump. There was the room, sweeping the floor all by itself. It stopped for a moment and turned to the window, then went back to work. At 
first, Mina was frightened, but the broom seemed harmless, and what's, and what's more, it was doing a very good job. Unfortunately, it swept all day long. In the evening, to get some peace, she locked the broom in the closet, but when it tapped on the door for more than an hour, Mina felt guilty and let it out. As she lay in bed listening to the room sweeping each room over and over, she wondered if it could learn to do other things. In the morning, she led the room outside and found that it was a very good student. She needed to show it how to do something only once. Soon the broom could chop wood and fetch water, feed the chickens and bring the cow from the pasture. It could even pick out simple tunes on the piano. You could see the broom giving the chickens feed. Not a week passed before the widow's neighbors, the Spideys, found out about the broom. Their farm was just down the ro road, the only other place around. It was one of the eight Spivey children who saw the broom first. When the boy told his father, Mr. Spivey ran straight across the road to the widow's house. Is it true, he demanded? Did she really have such a broom? Oh yes, Minishaw answered. It's wonderful. She told her neighbor all about the broom and the witch who left it behind. And she took him around to the back of the house where the broom was hard at work splitting wood. Mr. Spivey was horrified. This is a wicked, wicked thing, he said. This is the devil. The room stopped working and still clutching axe, the axe hopped toward the widow and her neighbor. Mr. Spivey, red-faced with anger, turned quickly and hurried home. Soon, more distant neighbors heard about the room and visited the widow's farm. The men who saw it seemed to agree. It was probably a wicked thing. But their wives pointed out that it was a great help to the widow and could play the piano well, considering that it just struck with one note at a time. No one's feelings were as strong as Mr. Spivey's. It's evil and dangerous, he told everyone who would listen. We'd all be sorry if this thing stays among us. As the days went by, the room seemed as innocent and hardworking as ever. Though it learned how to do many things, sweeping brought it a special pleasure. It was, after all, a broom. Occasionally, there was nothing left to do around the widow's house. It would hop down to the road that separated Mina Shaw's and the Spivey's farm. The road was dirt, of course, and the broom could amuse itself there for hours. One afternoon, two of the Spivey boys and their dog walked along the road where the broom was happily at work. When they saw what it was doing, they kicked the small stones the broom had swept aside back into its path. The broom ignored them and shuffled off to sweep another part of the road. But the Spivey boys would not leave it alone. They called the broom names. When it continued to ignore them, they picked up a couple of sticks and started tapping the broom's handle. Finally, it stopped sweeping. The broom turned to the two boys and knocked them both on the head so hard they fell to the ground in tears. The broom hopped off, but the spicy, Spivey dog ran after it, yapping and biting at its bristles. Get him, the boys yelled. The little dog leaped into the air and caught the broom by the handle, but he was not there for long. I mean, see the dog flying off the broom. Evening, Mr. Spivey drove his wagon up to the widow's house. He was not alone. Three men from neighboring farms were in the wagon, along with a long wooden stake and coils of rope. Mr. Spivey knocked loudly. When she opened her door, Mina was frightened by what she saw. We have come for the broom, her neighbor told her. It's beaten my sons and likely done worse to my dog. The poor animal was nowhere to be found. The widow could tell by their faces that the men would not be leaving without her broom. There was nothing she could do to stop them. For a moment, she stood silently, then answered, Of course, you are right. If we could do such a thing, we must get rid of it. She led the men into her kitchen. It sleeps in here, she whispered, pointing to a closet. If you move it carefully, it will not wake up. The men knew how strong the broom was and hoped the widow was right. They opened the closet door, revealing the slumbering broom. One of the farmers took it out and gently held it against the stake while the others wrapped it in yards of ro rope. They carried the broom outside, drove the stake into the ground, and gathered straw around it. Mr. Spivey lit the fire. In no time, flames turned the broom to ashes. Life soon returned to normal around the widow's farm. The Spiveys even found their dog, healthy but hungry, caught in the branches of a tall spruce tree. 
Then one morning, Lena Shaw called in her neighbors with frightening news. She had seen the ghost of her poo. It was as white as snow and moved through the woods at, a, at night carrying an axe. Mr. Spivey did not believe her. But that night, under a full moon, he watched from a window as the broom's white ghost came out of the woods and slowly circled his house. The next night it returned, circling even closer, and the night after it came again, tapping the axe lightly on the Spivey's door. See the broom with its axe? The ghost? The ghost. The next morning, Mr. and Mrs. Spivey packed their dearest possessions and eight children into their wagon. Mr. Spivey tried to convince the widow to leave with them, but she chose to stay behind in her little farmhouse. She went down to the road as the wagon pulled away and waved goodbye to her neighbors. You're a brave woman, Mr. Spivey called out. That evening, the widow fell asleep in her chair by the fire. She be she'd been listening to music, simple tunes played one note at a time on the piano. A gentle tap on the shoulder woke her. She looked up and smiled at the broom. Not a ghost at all, but still covered with the coat of white paint she'd given it. You play so nicely, Mina Shaw said. The broom bowed, put a log on the fire, and played another tune. Bent. Isn't that a great story? What do you think happened to the magic broom? Was it really burnt? How did Mina trick the Spiveys into thinking her broom was a ghost? Okay, now I have a more important question for you to think about. The Spiveys fear the broom because they don't understand it. Sometimes this happens between people too, where people don't like e other people or, or e even fear them because they don't know them and don't understand them. Can you think of a situation where people fear someone or something that they don't understand? Now, one last fun question. Think about if you could design your own magic room. What would your room look like? What magic qualities would this room have? Draw a picture that shows your magical broom. I hope you all love this book, but most importantly, stay strong and read on. Now that you've met all our friends, this is where the story ends. All new adventures on the way, drift off and dream the night away. I love reading. I love reading.